Clubhouse. It's Friday, so let's have a question and a conversation. The question today is Romans 11, 25 through 26. What does it mean that all Israel will be saved? And this is why we call it questions and conversations instead of questions and answers. Romans 9, 10, and 11 is obviously very disputed territory. People would love to argue about what this means eschatologically. Uh, they want to know what it means for, as Paul's talking, let's get into all that. I think that it's fun if we don't put too much pressure on us, if we're not making it a place of division, but a place of conversation. We can have a lot of fun thinking about it. So 11, uh, Romans 11, 25 and 26 says this. I'll finish up with 27. Lest you be wise in your own sight. So whatever Paul is saying, he is saying it so people don't get arrogant. And again, he's got Romans, Greek thinkers and Jews. And he's trying to figure out how this makes a church. He's trying to say, guys, instead of being entrenched where you are, you need to recognize that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You need to recognize that that um, salvation is the free gift of God in Christ, but it's only in Christ. So you can't think of yourselves primarily as a Jew. You can't think of yourselves primarily as Greek or Roman. Instead, we have to see ourselves as in Christ, and that's where salvation is. And and so to say, hey, I don't want you to be too wise in your own sight. We might remember as we have this conversation that that's the point of at least Paul writing this section in, in Romans 11. I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery. Anytime you see the word mystery, Paul, Ephesians is really strong on this. Paul um, saw the mystery of the gospel as the cross and the resurrection being enough to bridge the gap between Jews and Gentiles. This was the mystery of the gospel, was how the, the people of God went from Israel to those who are in Christ of every tongue and every tribe all around the world. So um, this is the mystery. So he says, look, I don't want you to be wise in your own eyes. I don't want you to think that your camp is right just because you think it. Uh, but I also don't want you to be unaware of this mystery, that this is something that God's done is brought Jews and Gentiles together. Um, so he says, I, um, this is regarding that mystery, brothers. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. So clearly God has not rejected Israel, even though Israel rejected the, the Messiah. God has not rejected Israel, but Paul's looking around and saying Israel is hard hearted and especially thinking about the the leadership, thinking about the priesthood, thinking about the temple, thinking about the sacrificial system. He's saying, look, when I look at um, the, the leaders, what we call our religious leaders as Jews, there is a hardness there. There has not been a receptivity to the good news in Christ. Rather, there's been a hardness. And so he says, a full, uh, until the fullness of Gentiles has come in. So Paul anticipates a time when that hardness will break down and um, Jewish people will recognize Jesus as their Messiah. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. And that's the heart of the question. What's meant by all Israel um, will be saved? As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion and he will uh, banish ungodliness from Jacob. So Okay, so by Israel being saved, Israel be, will be redeemed. Israel be returned to um, the sinfulness out of the place and, and submitted to God once again. And this will be my covenant with them uh, when I take away their sins. So Paul sees a time when Israel recognizes that God has taken away their sins. Goes on to talk about this beautiful olive tree that the gentiles have been grafted into this ancient root that what god did in christ was not a casting off of the old plan and a beginning a brand new plan but rather even though we use the word the new covenant and it absolutely is a new covenant that's a biblical term yet it is grounded all the way back to genesis 3 and the point of all the covenants was the messiah and god has fulfilled, not done away with the old covenants, but fulfilled those old covenants in Christ. So the questions we have to think through are, who is Israel? And what did that mean when Paul was writing? 
and what does it mean now? And then, you know, less sure of it. This is why it's a conversation, not an answer. Um, but what will that mean in the last days? What does that mean as we draw near the end of time? Well, let's answer that first question. What's Paul mean by all Israel? Well, I think to understand that best, we would turn a couple of chapters back to Romans 9. And, and Paul makes it pretty clear. Look at verse 6 in, of Romans 9. And again, Romans 9, 10, and 11 hold in an open hand. There's a lot of discussion, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of difficulty after this much time has passed. And, um, and we're, allowed to, we're allowed to discuss. Maybe Paul's leaning this way. Maybe Paul kind of means this. But the things that are clear are very clear. And that is nobody's saved outside of Christ. That's never been true, and it's never going to be true. And God loves Israel. It's always true. Okay, so um, verse 6 of Romans 9. But it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. What, Paul? What are you talking about? So not all Israel is Israel? Well, what does he mean by that? Well, I think it's pretty obvious what he means by that. If we put our thinking caps on, he continues and says, and not all are the children of Abraham because they are his offspring, but through Isaac shall your offspring be named. So immediately, even before the name Israel is an identifier of this people, um, as Abraham has children, it is going to be, you know, the, the tribe of Abraham is God's chosen people. And yet, not Ishmael, but Isaac. So even already there is a segmenting off is, yeah, what God means by the people of Abraham is not all of the biological descendants of Abraham, but rather it's those inside the covenant of Abraham. Um, so through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that God is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise that are counted as offspring. So it is those who are in the covenant, who have been faithful to the covenant and who are part of the covenant community. So you continue to think about how the Old Testament progresses and, say, and you say, OK, well, God is looking at people who are biologically descendants of Abraham all the time and saying no, not you, because you didn't keep the covenant, but rather it's going to be um, through the the covenant keeping part. The um, oh gosh, what's his name? One of my um, favorite theologians, whose name is escaping my mind, describes it. Heiser, my, Dr. Michael Heiser. He um, he he describes what has always been the um, precursor to salvation as uh, believing loyalty to Yahweh. So it's not just bloodline that makes you a child of Abraham, but rather it is the believing loyalty that comes with, oh, this is what God promised our people, and I believe it, and I'm living according to it. So there was not immediate salvation for everybody that was born of, um, of Abraham's bloodline, but rather this was the people chosen to have a relationship with God, and they made choices to keep the covenant or not. So as we look at Israel as a whole, we would say, yeah, all Israel is saved. God kept his promise to all Israel. Um, he promised the Messiah, and he brought the Jewish Messiah. So all Israel can be saved. Now, that doesn't mean that every individual of the nation of Israel had that believing loyalty to the promises of Yahweh. And as Paul's looking around in his day, that's still true. So what did it mean as Paul is writing? Well, it meant quite simply this. Jesus is now resurrected. There is a new covenant, and it's not a covenant that has come from left field or from the Gentiles. It's the Jewish Messiah making a way for the Jewish nation to fall down and worship the Jewish Messiah and be saved. So in the same way that, um, that, that true Israel was always the branch that was faithful to God. Now in Paul's time, he's saying, look, you cannot reject the Jewish Messiah and say, I'm saved because I'm a child of Abraham. That's arrogant. This is that wise in your own sight that he's talking about. No, the point of being a Jew was to recognize 
and be a part to recognize Jesus when he comes and be a part of the work of redemption and reconciliation that God is currently doing all around the world. So Paul is saying, look, don't just take your 23 and me DNA test and go, oh, I'm somehow biologically related to Abraham and that is enough. No, it's a gift to be related to Abraham. It was from your people that the promises came. You had the prophets. You had the old covenants. You were able to see this clearer than anybody else. And yet you still must be in Christ. So if it was not Abraham, not Ishmael, um, not Esau, uh, but Jacob, if there was always this pairing off in, in, in Paul's time, he's saying, look, here's the pairing off now. It's those that are in Christ. It's not just everyone who was in the old covenant, but it's those who have recognized and have followed Jesus. This is those who are saved. This is the true people of God now. So that's what it meant then. So what does that mean now? Well, I think it means the same thing. If you're a Jewish person, it is one thing to say, I have this rich tradition and this rich nearness with God that my people have had since Abraham. You're right. That's a, what a blessing. What a great thing. And yet you cannot reject the Jewish Messiah and say, I'm a faithful Jew. It was uh, Jesus was a Jewish person who was sent the son of the Jewish God, Yahweh, who was uh, um, circumcised on the eighth day in the temple, dedicated as a Jewish man, was a Jewish rabbi, and then died and resurrected to give us new life. And so Paul wants to make the point that you cannot reject the Jewish Messiah and say, oh, but I'm saved because I'm a Jew. Now you are incredibly blessed to be a Jewish person. I still think that's true. What a blessing to have in your heritage all of the richness of the Old Testament stories and the covenants between God and your people. And, and yet, the covenants were always, if you'll follow me, you'll be saved. And if you reject me, there'll be a curse. And so Jesus is an extension of God's love. Jesus extends the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is drawn near. And the mystery is this is not only available to Jews, but this is also available to Gentiles. Paul called that a mystery. It was so mind blowing. But the Jewish person still has to choose Christ. And so a Jewish person that rejects Christ and goes, no, it says all Israel will be saved. So I'm saved even if I reject Jesus. Paul would say, no, it's never worked like that. It's always been those who not only had Jewish blood running through their body, but also had believing loyalty and faithfulness to the covenants of God. So what does that mean in the last days? Well, again, this is why we call it a conversation, not, uh, um, not an answer. There's wide disagreement about what it could mean in the last days, but here's what I think it can't mean, is that Jewish people will have um, salvation apart from Christ. I can tell you what I hope I think it means, that there will be a revival of faith in the Jewish nation as the end times draw near. I have every hope that there's revival in every nation, but I have every hope that that there will be people, uh, 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 just a uprising of people in the Jewish community saying, wow, Jesus really is the Jewish Messiah. And they would begin worshiping Jesus as their Messiah and thus be saved. But have you read Paul? <laughs> have you read the New Testament? There is no salvation outside of Christ. So whatever it means, it can't mean that the Jewish nation will be saved by the old covenants. The Jewish nation will be saved by keeping the law. No, rather, what I hope it means is that there will be a time when there is a revival among Jews and they would come to their Messiah, Jesus. Um, there is no salvation apart from Christ. And I would encourage you with this, whether you're Jewish or not, as we're talking and every anytime we talk about end time stuff, I always want to bring this up. 
the end times for the world, the, the you know, the parousia, the second coming, the, um, you know, all of the stuff that we're looking forward to at the second coming of Christ. I don't know when that's happening, but I know in the next hundred years you're going to die. And that the end times for me is probably 50 years away or less. And so whatever we think is going to happen globally at the second coming of Christ, you and I just get a hundred years or less to say yes to the Jewish Messiah, to say, yes, Jesus' death is my hope. Jesus' resurrection is my hope of my resurrection. I'm going to die to myself and live for him. So whether, you know, however this looks for the Jewish nation in the future, Paul's encouragement was come to Christ. Hey, Jews, you are the ancient root. Say yes to the Jewish Messiah and be not only okay with, but revel in the glory that this mysterious thing has happened. And God has made a way for the Gentiles to be grafted into this relationship with him. And if you're a Gentile, say yes to the Jewish Messiah. We have the wonderful opportunity to have a covenant relationship with Christ, with God through Christ. But there's no time in the past or in the future where salvation comes from anywhere except the blood of Jesus. All right, be loved.